Welcome everybody to Safe Option Strategies presentation of using spread trades to enhance collar trades. This class is a production of Safe Option Strategies and the content is protected by copyright. Any reproduction or redistribution of this or any Safe Option Strategies presentation is strictly prohibited by law. The information presented in this class is for education purposes only. Safe Option Strategies does not make any recommendation to buy or sell stocks or options. Trading stocks and options comes with risk and you are solely responsible for any losses you may incur as a result of trading. Now, before, before we go any farther, we're going to have a little bit of conversation here. And it's not so much conversation, it's Jeffrey lecturing you. Um, I, I, I wish we get enough people on these live classes that if I just unmuted everyone's microphone, I'm, I'm fearful always that it would get a little crazy, that we'd have a little too much background noise. And so that's the main reason I don't do it. Um, but I still consider this more of a conversation because I know you guys can type things in and ask questions as we go. Um, and we can, you know, so I, I consider it more of a conversation, but th this will be for a minute or two a little bit of a lecture. Um, when we talk about collars and spread trades, now it, it used to be, in fact, the last time I did this class, I actually did this class following the exploding collar trade and, and adjusting the exploding collar trade class. And as I was looking at some things last night and this morning, I, I realized. I, well, let me let me back up. I remember why I put this in ahead of the exploding collar trade, and and to me the order was wrong. The exploding collar trade is the primary best example of using spread trades to enhance collar trades. This class is meant more to be a philosophical setting the stage of how to do all of that. And that's the reason I switched the order. So this, this is not a real long class. This class is more of a conceptual class. There's gonna be less nuts and bolts in this class. It's more a conversation about the concept and the idea and the advantages of using collar trades and spread trades together to enhance each other. It is my favorite way of trading. I've, I've been very transparent and very upfront with people over the years that I've done this. The majority of my money is in collar trades. Most of the spread trades that I do, not all of them, but most of them, are in some way, shape, or form, they're under the umbrella of a collar trade. And that's what we're going to talk about, is, is using a collar trade as kind of a launching platform, if you will, to, to set up easier spread trades, less stressful spread trades, less risk spread trades. So as we go through this, it may only end up being a 30-minute class, uh, and that'll depend a little bit on how many questions you have. And and we we I don't mind it. I don't say this in a negative way. We get off on we get off on tangents once in a while. I, I'm I'm hopeful that these tangents are directly because of questions that you're asking, and that they're very applicable and that they're very appropriate. Um, and I'm okay with you guys telling me that I'm getting off on a tangent that's that's less applicable. But as we go through this, I want you to keep in mind we're we're not. I don't want to get on a tangent that has a lot to do with nuts and bolts. I'm, I'm not going to give you answers. I know you're going to think it. Some of you are going to think it. When should I use this spread trade instead of this spread trade under this collar circumstances? That's not what this class is about. This class is more the concept of matching the two together and using the two in conjunction with the other. So let's start off this way. I, I know this is very common sense to some of you. It may even seem a little bit... Um, uh, overly redundant, but let's talk about it anyway. Differences between collar trades and spread trades. Now, again, I'm not talking so much the mechanics, a little bit. There's a little bit of mechanics in here, but not so much the mechanics. But what are the uh, some of the obvious differences between collar trades and spread trades? Collar trades take more capital than spread trades. In a collar trade, our plan and our execution from the very beginning is to own the stock. And even if it's an inexpensive stock, we're probably going to do it with more shares and, and therefore our investment into stock is in most cases going to be greater than our investment or, or in a credit spread, even our max risk or our, our option requirement in a spread trade. So collar trades simply take more capital. That probably more than anything else, what keeps some people from learning collar trading, which I think is a big mistake. And I'm, I hope I'm not picking on anybody. If, if you prefer spread trading and you like spread trading and you don't ever want to own the stock, that's okay. 
I, I don't trade that way. I think it's a mistake to not have most of your money in collar trades. Um, but they take more capital. You might, you might have a few less stocks you can own, a few less trades you can be in at one time if you've got some limited funds or if your preference is to hold a whole bunch of shares of a few stock versus a smaller number of shares of a lot of different stocks. And there's a lot of room for personal interpretation in that and personal style in that. Collar trades have far less risk than spread trades. There is no getting around that. Does that mean every collar trade is profitable every day? No, a new collar trade can draw down a little bit. A collar trade that goes stagnant can at times be very frustrating because we're losing money in long puts and we're having to add new long puts and we're not quite getting back what we'd like to in rolling the short calls and there's not enough credit and so forth. Collar trades can draw down a little bit and that can be frustrating, but generally speaking, there's far less risk in collar trades. Collar trades are for the long haul. Collar trades are for the individual who can put their money to work for them and probably doesn't have to start drawing money out right away for their lifestyle. Now, that doesn't mean it can't be done. If you haven't already watched them, watch the portfolio management series. Watch how we recommend, go, go learn how we recommend you manage a portfolio for cash flow. It's different than what most people will tell you to do for a cash flow portfolio. But even if you're in need of cash flow right now today, I would encourage you to still have the majority of your money in collars and, and go to that class. And we're, we're doing that class live, I think, within the next few weeks. We're, we're getting towards um, the later classes in the curriculum, so it'll, it'll come up live shortly. If you want to wait till then, that's fine. Never forget this. And, and we've already talked about it a little bit when we said collars have far less risk than spread trades. The best planned, most well-executed spread trade adjustment can still result in a loss. Don't ever kid yourself into thinking that adjustments to spread trades are foolproof. They are not. If something turns very suddenly and very sharply against what our expectation is and against what our trade is set up to profit from, the most well-planned, well-executed spread trade adjustment may only lessen our losses and sometimes it will only slightly lessen our losses. Now, the reason we spread trade and the reason we spread trade with adjustment strategies is because more often than not, a good adjustment strategy can save us from the big losses and in many cases, get us back to a break even or a profitable level. But don't ever forget this last bullet point on this, on this page. The best plan, most well-executed spread trade adjustments can still result in a loss. So let's go into a typical, let, let's look at a typical collar trade and let's start this process of weaving spread trades into the collar trades. In a typical collar trade, we have stock, we have a long put, typically three months out in expiration. If we can't find a three month out to expiration option available, we go out maybe four months. If we can't find four months, we look at sort of the long end of two months. Everybody know what I mean by the long end of two months? We're doing this class live in the month of August, so it would be easy to say September, October, November. A November option right now today, a November option is three months out in expiration, right? And that means that the December option is four months, but if we couldn't find, if it, if it wasn't available to us, because the, every option, every month doesn't have option expirations. They do eventually, but right now, today, at this snapshot in time, not every month is available. So we're, we're doing this class live in August. I, I say that for the benefit of those that might be watching the recording a week from now, a month from now, two months from now. Um, but we're doing this live in August. There's our three-month option right there. And we're actually just past the monthly expiration of August as we're doing this class live. So this option expiration might not be available. And weekly options are going to be the August week four, the September week one, the September week two, then there's our monthly September option, the September week four, and if September had a fifth Friday in it, maybe the September week five would be available right now. That means there's a chance we may or may not have November options available to us. We may or may not have October options available to us. We may or may not have December options available to us, speaking of the monthly expirations. 
So this is our first choice in a traditional collar. This is just a good review because it'll help set the stage for what we're going to do. This is our first choice. This is our second choice. This is our third choice. Even though this is only two months out to expiration, if we are in a situation where this is exactly two months would be 60 days and exactly three months would be 90 days, we'd like to be in the direction of 90 days more so than in the direction of 60 days. So when we say the two month out to expiration option, it may be the calendar month that is two months away from us, but it would be really nice if this was something more like 75 days, 76 days, 80 days maybe. Not quite a three month option, but something well beyond 60 days. Does that make sense? So if, if our choice is that if, if, our, if what we're faced with is we don't have the three month to expiration option, the four month is not available, we'll look at the two month away option if we're on the long end of two months, like two months plus. That might be the best way to say it, is two plus months. And then if we don't have that, then we may at times go out and look at an option four months away. I guarantee one of these will be available when you're setting up a calendar. So it's a calendar. I can't talk right. A collar trade, a traditional typical collar trade, meaning the safe option strategy is typical collar trade. So we've got our stock, we've got our long put, we've got our short call. Um, question came in, why would we not try to get past the next earnings reports that is three months away, approximately away? Our goal is typically going to be to get past the earnings report if we're placing, if, if the time we're buying this long put option, if at the time we're buying this long put option, we are coming up to an earnings report, because that's a, a lot of times that's when we'll buy the long put option, is when earnings is within a week to a week and a half away, sometimes even closer than that. In that case, that's, that's the whole reason why three months is our first choice, four months is our second choice, because we would like to be out to or beyond the next earnings report. But prior to going out to five months out in expiration, because this starts to get really expensive, and this starts to increase, if you go out this far to, to five months away, what happens is it becomes more difficult to get a short call that is not a leap option. When we are getting into a traditional collar trade, not an exploding collar trade, not an out-of-the-box collar trade or whatever else you want to call it. When we are getting into a more traditional, typical collar trade, we don't want to be any farther out in expiration on these short calls than we absolutely have to be. And if you go five months or more out, odds are you're going to have to now get into a leap option for that short call. And that's why if it's on the longer side of that two months, maybe the, the, the calendar month that's two months away, but it's closer to... 90 days than to 60 days, that's, that's the case where I would be more than willing to go to that one that's two calendar months away if it's on the far end of it. And then if that's not an option, no pun intended, if that's not a good strong possibility, then I'll go out and take a look at this and, and weigh the pros and cons of how much I'm going to have to pay for that option. But, but the whole goal there is for it to not get so overly expensive that, that we're just tying up too much funds in that. Okay? Great question. All right. So this is our, this is our collar trade structure. This is how we want to be set up. And now we have our event. We have our, oh, let me, before I make that move. Now we have our earnings report or maybe we collared because of technical crossovers to the bearish side and it head faked us and now it's moving up. And, and whatever the reason is, a strong move to the upside after the um, earnings report, uh, maybe we get a little bit of a head fake after a technical indicator that shows us that we're moving to the downside. Now we decide we're going to adjust because we've made the determination, best educated guess, is that we're back into a bullish trend. Now, we talked about this in the previous class. We talked, we talked specifically about a good adjustment is roll that short call up to a higher strike price and farther out in time. 
and then we talk possibility of adding some short puts against these long puts in the form of some type of a put calendar, whether it's same strike prices, different expiration dates, which would make it a horizontal put calendar, uh, higher strike price for the short put than the long put, turning it into a, a bull put calendar, and, and we talked about this in our previous class when we talked about adjusting the collar trade. Did you stop and consider at that time that what we've done is simply turn those long puts into a spread trade? The put calendar, horizontal, the bull put calendar, vertical tra or a diagonal trade, maybe an outright bull put, maybe we start those short puts in the same expiration as the long puts. Is that not a spread trade? And is that spread trade not taking place under the umbrella of a collar trade that we started? See, we've, we've already kind of introduced this concept. Now, another adjustment we talked about doing is that you could buy to close the short call and sell to close your stock, right? We talked about that as a possible adjustment. And why did we talk about that as a possible adjustment? Why was that one of the adjustments that we looked at um, was, was getting rid of the stock and the short call? We would do that if we could do so profitably, right? If we could do it profitably, there might be, why, why is it even a possibility? What happens to the short call value relative to the value of the stock? They're both going up, right? Let's 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 back. Let me let me bring those back on for a second. The price of the stock is going up, and we know that the short call value would be going up, right? But because of the delta, theoretically speaking, for every dollar that the stock goes up in value, the short call should only be increasing in value according to the delta. So if we had a 0.6 delta, 0.60 delta, for every dollar the stock goes up in value, this should only increase 60 cents. That means for every dollar the stock moves up, there should be theoretically 40 cents per share of profit. So if we start with a $60 stock and we get, say, a $15 move up in price, we ought to see about a $6 per share profit. I keep saying theoretically because what are the Greeks? The delta, the gamma, the theta, the vega, what are they? They're theoretical data, right? They're constantly moving. They're constantly changing. And I'm just using 60 cents here as an example. I, the, the delta might be 0.5. It might be 0.4. I'm just using 0.6 as an example here. Whatever that delta is, it tells us how far up in value that short call should go for every dollar move up in the stock. But it's theoretical data. It's changing. As this gets closer to and eventually moves in the money, this will get closer to and eventually it could get up to 0.99 to where there is almost dollar for dollar movement up with the short call as there is with the stock. Right up until the day of expiration, this should never be 1.0. The highest it should ever get is 0.99. If your broker's website has algorithms written into it that will round things up, there's a possibility you could see this rounded up. And maybe at the day of option expiration, if this was deep in the money, this might say 1.0. So, so I'm... I'm I'm, here's one of those tangents we're getting off on. We're talking a little too much about the delta. But the, the whole reason we could sell that stock and buy to close that short call is because we could do so profitably. And then we are left with just a spread trade. All we have now is the spread, right? That's all we've got. So how comfortable are you now? How confident are you now? in managing this particular spread trade. Hopefully, you've studied enough and learned enough about the spread trades that at this point in time, you feel completely confident managing a spread trade. Now, is this the only spread trade you could put into place? 
Is this the only spread trade that you could have going in your position? Are there, are there other things you could do with this? There's plenty of other things you could do with it. Okay, one of the, let's 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 review some other things we could do with this. We've got our caller trade set up again. And what if we started? What if we started this entire trade? What what's the difference? What's the difference you see between this setup and the setup we had previously in our caller trade? Now, some of you who have studied and been to live classes and you know the exploding collar trade, this should kind of jump out to you pretty quickly and be pretty obvious. There's a big difference in our setup of our collar trade here versus our setup of our collar trade in, in a typical traditional collar trade. What's the difference? Okay, I've got it. You guys, you guys are not characteristically shy, but it looks like you're being shy right now. Okay, here we go. One brave soul. Um, <laughs> okay, short call. And David, you might have typed this in a second ago. And it may have taken a minute to show up on my screen, so I couldn't see it. Our short call is way farther out in time here. Did everybody notice that? I know at least a couple people did because they finally typed something in. Okay, our short call is way out here in time. And, and because we have dates, list, you know, calendar months listed down here, this looks like it's in February, but this could be, this could be a January 2018 leap option. We are close. We're, we're within a month of starting to see the January 2019 options become available. So it could be a leap 29 option fairly soon. It could be January 2017 is close enough now. I don't consider that a leap anymore. But it could be the March 2017. So I've seen some April 2017, some June 2017 options available. The point is, what happens to our credit? What, what is the difference in going way out in time like this and getting a much, much larger credit than what we would get in the more traditional color trade? What will happen here? We should get a much larger credit, right? Yeah, we should get a much larger credit. Going out in time like this, now now here's, here's the key, and this is why I said this will be a little more of a philosophical conversation than a nuts and bolts kind of conversation. What changes in the collar trade, think think about the collar trade. We a, a couple weeks ago we did a live version of the collar trade class, and in the following week week and a half we did the two part adjusting the collar trade class. So hopefully that's fresh on your mind. And if it's not, when we're done here, go back and review those classes. The newest versions of them are on the website right now. Go back and review the collar trade and the two part series of adjusting the collar trade. What is different? as it relates to the collar trade, other than we're way farther out in time and we take in a much bigger credit. Okay, those are the two things that we're gonna just agree on right now. We're way farther out in time, we have way more credit. What else changes in the collar trade at this point in time? Are we still protected if the stock were to take off to the downside? Is this long put option that's at the money and approximately three months out in expiration, if we found that three month option, that's ideal. Is that still protecting our stock? Is it protecting our, you don't have to answer that. Is it still protecting our stock in any different way than if the short call were in the next month of expiration past this long put and only one strike price higher? Nothing has changed in the way our stock is being protected, right? Nothing is different in the way we're protecting our stock. If the stock came down here and rebounded and started coming back up, and at this point in time, we leveraged into, we, we cashed in all this profit from these long puts, we leveraged into a whole bunch more shares, has anything changed? Other than this is way farther out in time, it's way, way farther out to expiration, has anything else changed? We still took this long put money, 
used it to leverage into a whole bunch of shares. We have all those shares making profit on the way out. None of those shares are going to get called out right away. At least it's unlikely that they will. They always could, but it's unlikely that they will. Even more unlikely because of how far out in time those short calls are. So in that respect, our collar trade hasn't changed. What if our collar trade, what if after we set up the collar trade and our catalyst event, typically the earnings comes and the stock takes off to the upside? Could we still sell to close the stock and buy to close the short call and possibly or probably do so at a profit? Theoretically, we could. This, the stock should still go up faster than the short call because of the delta. I will tell you from experience that when you get into leap covered calls, they go up in value faster than the near term short calls. And that's because they retain more of their extrinsic value based on time decay. They're not nearly as subject to time decay as the nearer term option. So whether, you know, the, the, the delta will tell you for one that this is probably going to move up faster than its cousin that's here at a nearer term expiration. Theoretically speaking, that stock should still increase in value faster than that short call. So theoretically speaking, you should still be able to get rid of both of those, right? So really, we haven't changed that possible adjustment. I'll tell you the one adjustment oh, let, 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 before I even get there. What was one of our other adjustments with the collar trade when the stock is moving up? We could just leave it alone and allow it to be called away from us, correct? Probably that's not happening. No matter how far that stock goes up, that's probably not happening anytime soon, right? But whether that happens or not, we could add short puts to these long puts and start creating that spread trade again. The, the hardest adjustment to make is if the stock is going up and it's moving above the strike price of our short call, we have nowhere to roll this in terms of out and up. If we want to keep the stock and eliminate the possibility of it being called away from us, we, when we have that nearer term short call that's maybe only one strike price higher than the long put, we have at least a couple of expiration months and hopefully two or three that we could choose from before we even get out here into leap options that we could roll up to a higher strike and out to a farther expiration. And what's our rule when we roll that option? Get as much or more credit on the new short option as what we're spending. This becomes money out. Make sure this money in is equal to or greater so that we're increasing or raising our strike price, but we're, it's not costing us anything to do so. So we've increased our potential profit in the trade. That adjustment is off the table now if we're starting, or at least it's much more difficult if we're starting with a leap option out here. But otherwise, the collar trade itself has not changed. The collar trade itself is the same. We've got the same protection on our stock. We've got the same adjustment if it moves down. We've got the same adjustment, one of the same adjustments if it moves up. If it goes into a stagnant trend, we've got the same adjustment because one of those adjustments is move that covered call right into a near term at the money or just out of the money short call and play a covered call strategy on some weekly or some monthly options until the time comes to call it again. The only adjustment we can't do when we start with a leap short call is we don't have a farther term expiration to roll that short call to. That's if we're in the farthest leap that's already available to us. But I'm going to circle back around to one of my questions because the answer came in for this question, but I wasn't quite ready to talk about it. And a couple of people, I had two different people that answered the question for me. The other thing that's different about the setup of this collar trade is this big credit you're taking in right here, what, what do we know about short call money? When we write a short call, 
That money is ours right now today. As long as we have the ability to follow through on our obligation, what does that short call obligate us to do? When we have a short call, whether we own stock or not, we have an obligation to sell stock at this price if the buyer of that option exercises their right to make us do so. We have to sell stock at that price if we're called out. We ha that is our obligation. We have the ability, as long as we own that stock, we have not given up our ability to fulfill that obligation. But the money, the money is ours right now. We can spend it right now today. And what that means is we've got cash over here that we can put to use. We've got, and I look at this, and here's the thing. I look at this, this extra, this circle and the dollar signs here, this represents the excess credit beyond what is needed to pay for this long put. In the traditional collar trade, we're trying to get this short call right here to give us as much or more credit as what is needed to pay the price of this long put or get very close to it. Sometimes we just get really close to it, but we're not quite. It's still a good collar trade. But in this case, this represents all the equity that was beyond what was needed to pay for this long put. And now we have extra capital that we can put to use in zero risk spread trades. And the reason I say there's zero risk spread trades is we're playing with someone else's money. Someone gave us money for the right to buy our stock away from us at this strike price. And as long as we have the stock, that's our money. But it's like it's like a gift. It's like it's like the it's like the check that grandma gives you on your birthday. When you think back to when you were younger, it's like the money that grandma gave you on your birthday. You didn't really have to do anything to earn it except survive another year. And so mom and dad were a little less concerned with how you spent that money. If you went out and blew it, it wasn't that big a deal. You didn't have to work for it, really. Our credit is still there. We can still profit on the stock going up. We could still buy to close the short call and, and sell the stock for profit. We could still add short puts to these long puts. We could still do stuff. But now we have the ability, if we want, to just add another spread into it that's paid for already. If the stock begin to move up after the earnings report, we could add, what, what is this? Who knows what this trade is right here? A long call with a short call at a higher strike price, but in the same month or week of expiration. What is that trade right there? It's a bull call spread, right? What, what's different about this bull call spread is that someone else's money that birthday check from grandma paid for it. If this goes up a little bit and then turns, we can still adjust this the way we would adjust it. We can still do the things we know how to do to adjust that spread trade. But in the event that we get that sudden unexpected turn, we're looking at this and saying, you know what? If my best case scenario, what, what did we say? What one of the beginning bullet points of this class, sometimes the most well-planned, well-executed adjustments to a spread trade only lessen the loss. Well, it's not as big a deal when it's all under the umbrella of a collar trade that is still risk-free. And, and it's kind of like you're playing with house money or you're, or you're spending that, that birthday check from grandma. You could add a calendar. Whoops, I went a little fast there. You could add a calendar spread to it. Maybe we're starting to get some upward trend. Our collar trade is kind of on autopilot. We could go out a little longer term with some long call. Whoops, th those aren't supposed to disappear so fast. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm going to trace them right now to keep them there. We get our long call. We add a short call at a higher strike, near term expiration. I love calendar spreads. 
I love bull call calendar spreads, and this one has the added advantage of being under this umbrella of the collar, and it's risk-free. We're playing with someone else's money. If the stock is going down following the earnings report, these long puts are protecting us. Why not add a bear put spread to the trade? And make even more money on the way down but have a trade that's easier to adjust than just long puts by themselves if it reverses and goes up. We could create a straddle or a strangle out here. Now, when we get into the exploding collar trade, I believe that's the next class coming up, we're going to talk about the advantage of doing something like this prior to the event that we're setting the collar trade up around. So that in addition to the long puts that are protecting us, that's the whole point of the collar. What's the number one reason we collar trade? To protect our investment. Our number one reason we collar trade is protection. But what if we enhance that protection with a trade that could profit in either direction? Now if the stock is taking off to the upside, nothing has changed with our collar trade. We have the same adjustments available to us with our collar trade. We may add short puts to this long put. We may not. We may sell to close this long put. There's other things we could do to adjust. We, we don't have that adjustment that would allow us to roll this out and up. So that's the one adjustment we're taking off the table. But now we have a straddle or a strangle. And if this movement is far enough, we're going to have another trade profitable for us right here. And the only limit to what you can do is your imagination and, let me, let me add one thing to that, your understanding of the spread trades. The reason I believe it is so, even for those individuals who aren't crazy about spread trading because maybe they've lost money, they've been burned, their number one goal is like mine, they want to protect their money. Why not learn how to enhance that with spread trading that for all intents and purposes is risk-free? And as we get into the next class, the next couple of classes, the exploding collar trade and adjusting the exploding collar trade, we'll get into some more of the nuts and bolts of this. Long-term short calls very seldom get called out even when they're deep in the money. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that the cash you bring into your account from a short call is yours to spend right now today. As long as you still have the ability to cover your short call obligation, you can spend that money right now today. You can maintain stock ownership. You can collar the, the stock ownership, which is the main part of your trade. You can collar trade it up. You can collar trade it down. And at the same time, you can use your profits and or your additional short call credits to work for you in spreads. If, if mentally and time-wise you have the ability to manage a few more moving pieces, enhancing your collar trades with the use of spread trades is, in my opinion, the absolute best, absolute safest way to be in the markets. Now, there, there's, there's account restrictions that don't allow for some of these things to take place. Um, if, if you're not able to work around those account restrictions, stick to the traditional collar trading. It's still a great way to trade even without this. But barring that, I'm, I'm of the opinion this is the best way to learn how to trade. And let me add one last, I'm going to back up. Let me add one last thing. Think about this for a minute. I meant to talk about this and I kind of skipped past it. So we'll, this, is, this is how we're going to, we won't go through all the summary points again. This is how we're going to end. Let's say, let, I'm going I'm to give you some hypothetical numbers just to help make sense of this. Okay, so we, let's say we've got this $60 share stock. Let's say we had to pay $3.50 a share for these long puts. And let's say we took in, I, I'm going to do this to keep the math simple. Let's say we took in $8 per share. And this is not uncommon. This is not an uncommon scenario. A great big credit for this long-term short call that's out here. So when all is said and done, we were left over with $4.50 per share that we could spend 
in, in some type of a spread trade. Now, if, if we did this with 300 shares of stock, and this would be three long put contracts here, and this would be three short call contracts here, 450 a share might not be enough to do three contracts each of our long calls and our long puts, but maybe we can do one long call contract and one long put contract. Because if these long puts were 350 a share, these long puts are probably going to be four and a half dollars a share. And these long calls are probably going to be four dollars a share. And that means we can't do three contracts of each one of these because this money adds up to a lot more than this extra 450 we had. But maybe we can do one or two contracts here. Okay, that part's easy. Look at the amount of money you have, not just the amount per share, but the actual amount of money you have, and then figure out how many contracts you can do here. Oftentimes, the contracts you do here, or if it was the bull call spread that we showed, the long call and the short call here, whatever trade it is that you add to this, look at the total amount of money that this adds up to. $4.50 a share times 300 shares, this is going to be $13.50. So whatever the cost of this bull call, this straddler strangle, the bear put, whatever the cost of that per share, you're going to divide 1350 by that and figure out how many contracts you can do. Okay, that, that part of it is simple math. If this were, uh, what's, what's a stock that's trading around $60 a share right now? Nike. Nike's very close to $60 a share right now. If this was Nike, Obviously, these long puts would be Nike, and obviously, these short calls would be Nike. Does this have to be Nike? Is there, is there any rule that says that this straddle or strangle right here has to be Nike? Who's one of Nike's competitors that we trade? Under Armour, right? What if going into the earnings and history telling us that there are times when Nike's going up and Under Armour is going Under Armour is going up and vice versa, whatever the case might be. Is there any reason why this couldn't be an Under Armour trade? Knowing that Nike is in the retail sector, would there be anything wrong with this being a Disney trade? That's not the retail sector. Well, I guess it has parts of has Disney's into everything, right? Disney's going to own the world one day. Let's say Boeing, not not exactly a retail company. Technically speaking, this is your money to spend any way you want to spend it. You are not obligated to make whatever trade you add to this. It does not have to be the same company. I think that's a good place to end. That'll, that'll, that'll keep your mind churning. That'll keep you thinking. I think that's a good place to end. We went through our summary points. I'm not going to hit them all again. This is, in my opinion, the best way to be in the markets today. Get really good at collar trading. Learn how to collar trade. Learn all the different ways to adjust the collar trade. And then start learning how to enhance it with your spread trades. Everybody have a great day. Hope to see you in our other live classes this week. Bye-bye.